Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is set up our very own GitLab server. In fact, we're going to build it manually, even though there's a marketplace app for setting up GitLab. Sometimes I think it's fun to just build something manually. That way you know what's in there. There's nothing wrong with the marketplace, obviously. If you want to get up and running very quickly, that's absolutely a great way to do it. But anyway, what I'm going to do is show you the process of setting up GitLab. And by the end of this video, you'll have your very own GitLab server. But actually, I might be getting ahead of myself. What exactly is GitLab? Well, at its core, GitLab is a front end to Git, not unlike GitHub or something like that. It's a free alternative to services like GitHub, and you could self-host it on your own Linode, which makes it even more powerful. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set it up. I can't wait to get started, so let's just dive right in. All right, so what do you need in order to get started with today's project? Well, the first thing that you're going to need is a Linux instance. More specifically, what I'll do is show you the process of setting up GitLab Community Edition on Ubuntu 22.04. So therefore, if you plan on following along with me, then I recommend that you set up a Linux instance with Ubuntu 22.04 as well. If you don't already have a Linux instance for this project, then you might want to consider checking out Linode. If you don't already have a preferred cloud computing provider, well, they're a great fit. Now the instructions that I'm going to give you in this video aren't actually specific to Linode though, so if you are already set up with another cloud provider, you can go ahead and use that. In fact, you can even set up GitLab on a physical server as well, but if you do, you'll have to configure port forwarding, which unfortunately is outside the scope of this video, especially considering the fact that there's countless models of firewalls and routers out there, so it's impossible for me to show you the process on each and every single model of router that you might have. Now, when it comes to the specs of your Linux server, it's recommended that you have a Linux server with access to at least four cores and also at least four gigabytes of memory. Now, on my end, I set up a Linux server on Linode already, as you can see right here. I chose the instance type that has four CPU cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. Having eight gigabytes of RAM is actually double the recommended RAM requirement, but this instance type will also have 160 gigabytes of storage available, so I think it's actually a great fit since you'll have a lot of headroom and also a fair amount of storage that you could use for your software repositories. Also, you'll need a domain as well. If you don't already have a domain, then you'll need to purchase one from your registrar of choice. Be sure to point your domain to the IP address of the Linux instance you plan on using for GitLab and that should take care of that requirement. After you do create your cloud instance, there's one last step that I recommend you go through before you get started with building GitLab. And what I'm referring to is you'll want to be sure to install all available updates, create a non-root user for yourself, lock down SSH, and so on. I'm actually not going to show you how to perform those tasks in this video because I have a dedicated video that goes over all of that already. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. In that video, what I do is I go over some of the things that I recommend you set up with every single Linux server. Once you do perform all of the tasks in that video, then you can meet me back in this video and then we'll continue along. The next section will actually continue where that video left off. Anyway, once you have all of those things prepared, we can get started with building our GitLab instance. And that's exactly what we'll do in the next section. So here on my Linux workstation, I'm ready to get started. So what I'm going to do is SSH into the server that I've already created for this project. And to do that, I'll type SSH. And then the username at the remote end, I've created the user J on the instance that I'll be using. Next, what we'll do is type in the domain that we've assigned to our server. So I'll type in mine, which is going to be gitlab.learnlinux.cloud, and let's connect. I'll respond to this prompt with yes, and then I'll type in my super secret password, and now I'm logged in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is install the official repository for GitLab. This will give us access to the community edition of GitLab straight from GitLab themselves. And to set that up, we'll run the command that I'm about to give you. So we'll type curl and then dash s. And then after that, we'll type a URL and that URL is going to be https colon slash slash packages.gitlab.com slash install and then slash repositories slash GitLab then slash gitlab hyphen ce and then slash script dot deb dot sh. And then what we'll do is pipe this particular command into sudo bash, just like that. Now I'm going to have all of the commands that I'm using in this video in the official blog post for this video. 
You'll find a link to that blog post in the description down below, so go ahead and visit that blog post if you want to copy and paste the commands. And for some of you, that might make the process easier. Now, before I press enter, I just want to mention that anytime you run a script from the internet, you'll definitely want to make sure that you check it before you run it. I've already done that off camera, so I know this script is fine, but I just wanted you to be aware of that in case you weren't already. Anyway, I'll press enter, and then I'll type in my password, and there we go. And what we've just done is set up the repository. GitLab itself is not installed yet, but we do have the repository now, and that gives us access to the packages for GitLab from GitLab's repository. As far as installing GitLab itself, well, the command that I'm about to give you is going to do exactly that. So I'll run sudo and then apt install, and the name of the package is going to be gitlab-ce, just like that. So I'll press enter. So now the package is downloading, and now it's installing. Now at this point, GitLab is technically installed, but it's not functioning yet. In order to make it function, we'll need to configure it, and there's a dedicated config file for GitLab that's already on our system now that we've installed this package. So to satisfy the setup requirements, what we'll do is run sudo and then nano, and you could use any text editor you want. I'm just using nano because it's easier to explain. My preferred editor is vim in case you're curious, but anyway, I'm running sudo nano, and the file that I want to edit is going to be located at slash etsy, and then GitLab, and the file name is going to be gitlab.rb. So I'll press enter. And what we have right here is the actual config file for GitLab. Now we're going to make several changes to this file before the end of the video, but for right now, we have just one change to make. And this is the change that's required for GitLab to be configured. What we'll do is we'll scroll down this particular file until we find the GitLab URL. And here it is. We have external URL, and what we'll do is change this to whatever our domain or subdomain is for our GitLab instance. In my case, what I've done is I've set up mine at gitlab.learnlinux.cloud. So that's my domain. What I'll do now is save the file. That's the only change that we're going to make to this file right now. And now that requirement has been met. So now that we've set the external URL in the GitLab config file, what we'll need to do now is reconfigure GitLab. And that's necessary anytime we make changes to the GitLab config file. And it's fairly easy to do, so I'll run sudo and then gitlab ctl. And what we're going to do is reconfigure. So I'll type that in and then I'll press enter. And this is going to take a minute to finish. So what I'll do is just fast forward time and then I'll be right back. And there we go. GitLab is completely set up. And we can actually access it from a web browser at this point, but before we do that, we need to fetch the root password. And to grab that, what we'll do is run sudo and then cat. The password is in a file, and the path to that file is slash etsy slash gitlab. And the file name is initial underscore root underscore password. And just like the verbiage says, this file will be deleted in 24 hours, so we definitely want to make sure that we grab this password. So what I'll do is copy the password right now. And with that password, we should be able to access our GitLab instance. So I'll switch back to my browser. And then in a new tab, what I'll do is try to access GitLab. Let's see if it works. And there it is. Now one issue here is that this is not a secure connection. We can see that from the verbiage here and also from the absence of a padlock here or a padlock without a line through it. So that's clearly a sign that our connection is not secure. We will be fixing that later in the video, but for right now, let's just go ahead and type in root for the username. And then I'll paste in the password that I grabbed from the earlier command. And I should be able to log in. And check that out. GitLab is working and I was actually able to log in. Now up here, it's letting us know that public signups are enabled and that may or may not be what you want. Now, if you're going to be collaborating with people around the world, then you might want to have this enabled. But if you're going to be using this just by yourself, or if you want to have this be a private instance, then what you could do is deactivate signups. And to do that, you could click this button right here. And I'm going to do that on mine, but I'll leave it up to you if this is something that you want to deactivate. And that'll bring you to this section right here. And there we can disable signups by unchecking this box. 
There's also other settings here you might want to pay attention to, for example, two-factor authentication. Now, I'll leave it up to you to look through these settings right here, but I just wanted to mention the user sign-up setting because depending on your needs, you may or may not want public signups. But perhaps the bigger issue here is that we don't have a secure connection. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'll go back to the dashboard to have that ready for later. And back at the terminal, what we're going to do is set up a Let's Encrypt certificate. And the process of doing so is actually very easy. In fact, we've already seen part of the process. Just like before, anytime we want to make any changes to GitLab settings, we do so inside the GitLab config file. So again, that was sudo and then nano or whatever your text editor of choice happens to be. And the file is going to be at slash etsy slash GitLab and then gitlab.rb. Now the first change that we'll need to make is to reconfigure the URL again. This is the exact same external URL setting that we configured last time. What we'll want to do is add an S right here, and that'll ensure that our URL defaults to HTTPS. We're not quite done yet. What I'm going to do is press Control W, that activates search. And I'm doing this because there's over 3,000 lines of config in this file, so it could be like a needle in a haystack to find any one setting. But Nano, just like any other text editor, has a search feature. And if I use the keyword Let's Encrypt, that's going to take me right to the section where we configure the settings for Let's Encrypt. Now what we're going to do is enable Let's Encrypt. So we're going to back out this setting right here. We're removing the hash symbol in front of the setting. After that, we'll also uncomment this setting right here. And this pertains to contact emails wherever we want to receive Let's Encrypt notifications. So what we'll do is go over here to the bracket. We'll type single quotes. And inside those single quotes, what we'll do is type in our email address. So I've typed in my email address. So now the requirements for that are all set. Another setting that we're going to want to adjust here is going to be this one here. We want to enable auto renew. It defaults to true, but I just want to make sure that I'm explicit and on commenting anything that I plan on using. And this is one of those things right here. We definitely want to make sure that auto renew for our certificate is enabled. Another thing that we could do is change when this particular certificate will be renewed anytime a renewal is necessary. Now for a lot of you, it probably doesn't matter, but for some of you, you might have a specific maintenance window that you need to adhere to. In that case, what you could do is customize the settings here to change the hour, minute, day of the month, and so on for when the certificate will be renewed. Now for me, I'll leave the renewal settings at their defaults. It doesn't really matter to me when this happens as long as it, well, happens. So I'll just save the file and we'll move on. Now in order for any changes to take effect that we make in the GitLab config file, we'll need to reconfigure GitLab. To do so, I'll run the same command that we ran last time when we set the external URL, that was sudo, and then gitlab-ctl, and then reconfigure. So I'll press enter, let's see what happens. And there we go. It looks like the reconfigure is finished, and if I've set everything properly, then I should have an SSL certificate. Let's see what happens. And back in my browser, what I'll do is refresh the page. Notice that we still don't have a secure symbol here. So when I refresh it, it should give me the secure symbol to verify that SSL is working. Let's see what happens with that. I'll just refresh the page and check it out. We have a certificate. If I click on the padlock, at least in the case of Firefox, then I go to more information and then view certificate. We can see the fact that it is in fact encrypted we see the actual URL here. And this instance is being secured by Let's Encrypt. And here we can see the time period for which the certificate is valid for, and so on. And with that said, we're all set. Our GitLab server is ready to go. And that about does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you followed along with me, then you now have your very own GitLab server. So what did you guys think of today's video? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you just so happen to like this video, then please let YouTube know about that by clicking the like button. I would really appreciate that. Now I have some additional content coming for this channel very soon, so I'm going to get back to that. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.